Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Regina. I talk a lot about testimonies and just messages that the Lord gives me, faith talks and things like that. So um, before I go ahead and get into today's topic. Go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel um, and share this video with anyone who you believe uh, should hear it. Um, today, I was listening to a message from my church and it was really about listening to the voice of God, hearing the voice of God. And the man, like it, this didn't have anything to do with the actual subject of hearing the voice of God, but he talked about how God told him who his wife was. And, um, and it just like took me on this roller coaster. Like, no, it took me on like memory lane. Like I just went back into my head and remembered all of these different things that I went through. And in my story, like, because my dad wasn't present in my life and I didn't have like a strong um, and consistent like father figure in my life for a very long time, um, I looked for love. And my friend, I remember my friend was like, well, she, she said like she always had crushes on different dudes and, um, and she was always interested in different guys, even though her dad was active and present in her life. And so, um, I don't know where you are. I don't know if you are single or married, um, or engaged, but, um, I felt like the Lord wanted me to dig into my past and just looking for attention. Um, before I knew the Lord, I was so into wanting to date guys, marry somebody, and um, just have boyfriends. And to be honest with you, like, I, I just, I didn't get to really date like I expected to be able to date in high school and even in college. And so when... I was in high school. I had so many crushes on different guys. Um, when I went to college, I just, all the friends that I had, I liked and had crushes on and wanted to date them and would end up unfortunately telling them and like just kind of chasing after good dudes, which is super vulnerable and like so sad to say, but I did. And um, I just found that it left me empty because no dude accepted me. And so um, the title of today's topic is I remember looking for my husband. Um, and I remember looking for different dudes to date. Um, and I just felt like the Lord was just like, Gina, there are some young ladies that really need to hear your testimony, or even women my age may need to hear this testimony. Um, you may be chasing after men, and you may be trying to make them want to be with you, and that's just the opposite of what God has called women to and for. Um, number one, like, I just, like the Lord is like, you're not a victim. Like, you're not a victim. When you called on the Lord as your Lord and Savior, he accepted you, he took you in, and you became his child. And you need to know, like, you are a child of God. You are a child of God, and no one on this earth acceptance of you is ever going to fill your cup. Even when you do get married, that's not going to fill up your cup like God is himself. When you have children, if you if you may be in that season of waiting, 
that's not going to fill up your cup or whatever you're waiting on as far as relationships go. They won't ever fill up your cup the way that you expect them to fill up your cup. And I didn't know that. I didn't, I just didn't know that. I, even on our first year of marriage, I, we, we had a great first year of marriage. It was so fun and adventurous, I feel like. And we took a lot of time getting to know each other. And, but I just always just think about like, what if, you know, I did get into other relationships with people and there were strong soul ties that were there. Um, and I don't know the depths of soul ties. Yeah, soul ties. I don't know the depths of how that is and how it manifests. Um, but I know that it's real. Like, I strongly believe that it's real. Um, <clears throat> and so I just feel like this video is dedicated to the woman who is chasing mentally. You may not like be physically like chasing after a dude or trying to get them to settle down or trying to get somebody to be with you, but you may have soul ties. Um, you may like you feel like when and if they're ready to come for you and be with you, like it's going to be like this majestic, magical thing. And that's just not real. Um, when I was in college, I remember there was so many different girls that liked this one dude. And I think over time, this guy ended up liking one of the girls that liked him. And he just was like, he just didn't, he just, how do I put it? Like, thought I heard my son, but he didn't really like, like all of these different girls and, um, girls just kind of chased after him, but he ended up marrying one of the girls that was kind of chasing after him but they had become really good friends. And so um, I guess I just am talking myself out of that situation. So I won't even use that as an example. All of this to say is that the one who is going to find you, like you won't have to chase him down. You won't have to work hard to uh, for him to love you. You won't have to work for this man to love you. He's going to, even in y'all's worst fights, um, he's going to come back and he's going to love you without a doubt. And um, I just believe that you should know that. I believe that you should know that you don't have to chase a man and get them to do what you want, or you don't have to um, even settle for the wrong guy. You don't have to like your fullness, your richness, like the, your, the bulk and the goodness of your life comes from the Lord. And God wants you to know that he wants you to know that he loves you enough. No, nothing, nobody can ever love you the way that he loves you. And the way that you really learn about God's love is when you visit him in the secret place. It's when you read your Bible, you worship him, and you surrender your life to him. I feel like there's some of us or some of you ladies that's watching this video, you need to surrender your relationships to God. You need to surrender your singleness to God. And, um, and it may even be you like coming into contact with the Lord and saying, is this relationship what you've called me to have? Because it's easy to just do what we want to do and not surrender our desire to be married to the Lord because God wants you to be married too, but he wants you to be ready and he wants you to be full in him before you get married. Before I got married, um, I have a video just listing out a few things that and where I was before I got married. And even we did a video together, Sam and I, just talking about marriage. And um, Sam and I were both seeking the Lord to meet each other. And so 
um, God made it clear that he wanted me to understand some of the duties as a wife. And um, it didn't neglect him and I's relationship together. Like me and the Lord's relationship got closer even while I was looking for a husband. And so I just also want to put that out there. Like there was just no not having Jesus in my marriage, in my, you know, relationship with Sam. Like God is literally top tier and he'll always be top tier. He'll always be number one. And so then it's Sam. And so like Sam has that very deep understanding because that's how his relationship is with God as well. But these are a few verses that Proverbs has about wife, um, being a wife. A wife, this is Proverbs 31.10, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. When this man finds you, he's going to know that you are so worthy. You're worthy to be loved. You're worthy to be hugged properly and loved well by Jesus. Like he is supposed to love the Lord. And then he's supposed to love you really well, show you how he loves you. And he's supposed to have a deep relationship with God. Not you trying to, you know, hand him the Bible to read or make him read the Bible. Like you want your future spouse to have depth with Jesus before he has depth with you. And you also need your identity in Christ before you get married. I didn't have my identity in Christ before I got married, to be honest. And I just, I just didn't have a lot of healing that I needed even before I got married, I feel like, to understand that I didn't have my identity in Christ. And so um, if I was single right now, I would be getting clear on my identity. I would be clear on getting whole in myself, which I was at that place. I was whole and I was um, seeking the Lord like intensely because I was single living alone in Dallas and I had the time to, you know, spend with God and work in all these different things. So the next a uh, piece of scripture I have is he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18, 22. And when I read that, I just felt like the Lord said, it's not she who finds a husband finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. It is he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The reason why I can talk about this is because I chased so much after dudes and it was stupidity. <laughs> it's just stupid. And like, because I was so thirsty, um, I just didn't understand how stupid it was because I wanted a relationship because I saw everybody around me dating, people getting married, and I wanted it so bad that I lost even sight of myself. You know what I mean? I don't even know if that makes sense. Like, I just lost sight of reality. And so, um, all of this to say is, like, number one, you become saved, right? And you start your foundation of having that quiet time with the Lord then um, you be consistent with that in that season. You take care good. You take good care of yourself, like your health, your fitness, your community. You have great, find great community. Um, shed off relationships that you know shouldn't be in your life. You get clear on your goals, right? Where are you going with this life? What has God called you to do with your life? Um, and then. Be secure in that. Be secure in your identity with the Lord. Be secure in where he has placed you and where you are going. And um, 
I just strongly believe like God will allow you to meet the person that you're looking for and you won't have to chase him. This burden came on my heart today. And so I just really wanted to share and I hope and pray that my vulnerability of just my past of looking at different dudes and being like, oh, I like you. Potentially we can date. And I think I've even shared that before. I shared last year um, just a vulnerable sharing. It's titled sharing a vulnerable season in my life. And um, I just talked about how um, like. God ended up shifting our um, trip to go to Miami um, and it allowed me to see how God protected me from a relationship that I wanted so bad that I think if that relationship even would have happened, it would have probably like destroyed me. Um, but God is so redemptive, like he could have taken that relationship and like clean the, the slate clear. I don't know what it would have looked like, but I just see how I just got so tied up into one guy and it just looked so silly and stupid, to be honest, to just chase after him. I did. And um, with me chasing after him, it was just so unhealthy. And so, but anyway... Like I ended up going back to Miami with my husband and it was really redemptive to experience how God allowed me to find a man of God, um, somebody who actually loves me and accepts me for who I am, where I am, and um, what just loves, loves me unconditionally with the love of God. And... I just am grateful for that. And I just want to share with anyone who may be struggling um, in their single singleness, like get your healing, get your healing um, and be praying for your future spouse to be receiving their healing. Be praying that God has you both on the same track, on the same journey. And so that when you guys meet, you'll be so ready and your relationship will be so full and you'll be able to say, God, thank you for allowing me to wait. I made, you know, maybe you're making mistakes along the way or I don't know, but, um, but thank you, Lord, for having me wait. Thank you, Lord, for this, my, my spouse. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to meet him and I'm healed. My identity is in you, Lord. Like my gifts are clear and where I'm going is very clear. Like, these things are so important, you know, um, because you don't want to be in unequally yoked relationships. You don't want to chase after a man because God has never called for a woman to chase after a man. Like, it ain't nowhere in the scriptures. You can put yourself out there. You can make yourself available um, you can say hi to someone and just, hey, how you doing? Make small conversation and things. I'm not saying you can't like make yourself like just slowly, you know, like just nonchalantly put yourself out there to him what, in whatever environment. But as far as chasing, mm, I look back and I'm like, Gina, Gina. But God is redemptive and, um, We've been married for quite some time and we we're blessed. We're so, so blessed. So I hope and pray that this video encourages you, blesses you, gives you some great insight and perspective. I pray that it hits home because God gave me a burden for those who used to be like me today, like just, all right, I've already gotten into it, but um I just hope and pray that this video blesses and encourages you. Please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends and your family, and I'll see you soon. This is my book, Baby God Kept You.